Mr. President, <laughs> members of the Board of Trustees, esteemed faculty, distinguished alumni, to all the friends and families here today, and most importantly to you, the graduating class of 2014, good morning. <laughs> I'm Christian Borrell, Shadyside Academy class of 1991. By day, professional actor. By night, comic book geek. Font of enough Star Wars trivia to fill a space cruiser. So when I tell you I'm really excited to be back at high school, what I really mean is, please don't beat me up. <laughs> Commencement. It's a momentous day. Your launching pad. Take a deep breath. It's a lot to take in. Webster's defines commencement, and I did not think to look it up. <laughs> Words cannot express how honored I am to be here today, truly. Um, so instead of words, I shall use the power of dance. I guess we're going with words. Um, <laughs> can I address the elephant in the room? I am just an actor. Uh, when Mr. Congiano called me and, and told me that some of you wanted me to speak today, <laughs> it wasn't unanimous. I'm, I'm not an idiot. Um, when he asked me to speak, I was filled with a great sense of dread. Um, what could I possibly say to a graduating class that's of any importance? I was on NBC's Smash. Um, didn't watch it, that's why I'm available to be here today. So the, um, <laughs> but amidst my panic, I was suddenly struck by inspiration. Plagiarism. I'll just cobble together a bunch of YouTube speeches from movies and uh, from famous celebrities in their caps and gowns receiving their honorary doctorates, and then voila. Uh, fun fact, uh, Channing Tatum usually closes with a quote from Adlai Stevenson. <laughs> usually, you can't pin him down. Um, but after some light Googling, I discovered that plagiarism is uh, what you in academia call frowned upon. <laughs> so here's the deal. I can only speak from experience. My experience uh, singing and dancing, um, taken all of it or taken none of it. Um, but just bear in mind that when I was a teenager, there was no such thing as email. Silence is what I was going for. Good, good, good. Um, usually when I'm standing in front of a large group of people, I'm getting paid to hide behind a character. Uh, as I stand here today, as myself, I'm grappling with A, this gig doesn't come with an honorarium. <laughs> and B, I'm still the same person I was sitting right there. Uh, little Christian, literally. I was. 4'11 until the middle of my junior year. I wore a dangly Gumby earring in my left ear for my senior photo. I was a uh, founder and co-president of the Ed Grimley Club. I think it's safe to say we did, uh, we did some important work. <laughs> Acting uh, was just a hobby for me until I reached the senior school. I'm sure there was a, there was a talking mule in second grade here. Uh, and the Ebenezer Scrooge with chicken pox in eighth grade there, but I just liked hamming it up in front of adults, I think is the technical term uh, for it. But then cut to third form, SSA. Uh, I was too shy to audition for the musical, so instead I sat in the audience in Mem Hall. Thank you very much. That building taunts me. <laughs> Watching Guys and Dolls. 
And everybody looked like a giant. It was too much for me. I was overwhelmed. It was time for a little Christian to find a new hobby. So my solution was uh, a slightly less nerdy choice than musical theater. I became a comic book artist. <laughs> Fourth form, the audition notice goes up for the spring musical, Oklahoma. Once again, too bashful. I did an audition until a friend of mine peer pressured me into it, and then I auditioned. This is, this is one of those rare pro peer pressure stories. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I hopped up on a stage to audition and, and something came over me. I was fearless. Well, I got it. The second lead, Will Parker, uh, opposite Amy Hartman, who was a senior. We would have to kiss. Um, that would actually be my first kiss. And it happened in front of none other than Mr. Brill during a rehearsal for act two. Uh, Amy was what we on the Broadway call my first showmance. Uh, and I was hooked. Hooked not just on the love of a good woman, but I had, I'd found my home. This was the first place where I felt like I could be myself, where I was free to take risks. And I fell flat on my face a lot, but now there were people there to pick me up and say, so what? Keep trying. Mr. Brill, Mr. Tadler, and Mrs. Gray Fisher saw a glimmer in me, not just dangling from my left ear, if you remember. <laughs> and they pointed me in the right direction. They encouraged my passion. Um, they fueled the fire. So I would say to you today, as you're sitting there, take a moment to reflect on how fortunate you are to have known these teachers. Let your gratitude show. They have given you an enormous head start. In the years to come, you will be able to trace all of the incredible successes that you will have back to teachers who inspired you and who cared and who took the time and who pointed you in the right direction. In time, you might even start to think of them as people. <laughs> yeah, take a moment. That's. Uh, that's pretty deep. <laughs> About a month ago, I had the great pleasure of sitting in Bryant Park on a sunny day in New York City, catching up with Mr. Brill. Mr. Brill, where are you? Hi. We just gabbed, we chatted, we caught up, talked about our families, we talked about choral singing, about Stephen Sondheim. And uh, as I sat there, it hit me that I am now seven years older than you were when I met you as a freshman. I still can't bring myself to call you Dan, though. <laughs> but I can say thank you. Flash forward, senior year. Uh, it suddenly dawned on me that I could only do two things, uh, ham it up for adults and draw superheroes. And ultimately, I felt like drawing Batman was lonely, painstaking work, just as Batman's work is. <laughs> So I went to college for acting, Carnegie Mellon, conservatory program, which basically means I have a degree in rolling around on the floor in black clothes. <laughs> it's been working. Um, <laughs> on the first day there, one of my teachers uh, said, when you graduate from here, you will not be a fully formed actor. It takes 20 years to become a good actor. 20 years. Who wants to hear that when you're 18 years old? So yeah, sorry. <laughs> You've still got some basting to do. <laughs> Shadyside Academy's task is not to produce a final product. Its task is to teach you how to learn. And the learning never stops. That's why this is called commencement. This is your beginning. And later, when you graduate from college, the little turkey timer that looks like a superfluous limp nipple. It doesn't pop up. There's the, the timer doesn't ding telling you you're done. If I've belabored the turkey dinner metaphor, it's because I was too nervous to eat breakfast. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Does anybody up here have like a Luna bar or something, anything? Oh. 
point is, the timer never dings, you never stop learning, you get it. <laughs> I'm gonna have a sip of water, why not? Um, open yourself up to the idea that unlikely teachers will cross your path. For example, not me. I just said superfluous nipple at a commencement ceremony twice now. <laughs> um, but you will learn from unexpected people. So try to remind yourself that you don't know everything. I don't know everything. Nobody here knows everything. I feel like Dr. Satula comes close. <laughs> And he's got great fashion sense. Look at that hat. <laughs> Hats are back, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations. <laughs> One of my unlikely teachers was um, a friend of mine in college. He was a brilliant actor, intimidatingly good. And uh, when we moved to New York City, he started getting cast immediately. All the biggest directors, the, all the hottest composers, they wanted a piece of him. Everyone. He, could, he was on fire. Um, and there was one problem. Uh, my friend was a jerk. He could not control his attitude. He was constantly getting in his own way. And so as a result, he worked with everyone once. And that man's name was, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just be on the lookout for people who can't help being a jerk. Uh, here's a dead giveaway. People who are dismissive of waiters and baristas. There's no excuse. Help yourself. Go out of your way to be kind. Over the long haul, that's what keeps people coming back for more. What lesson do you want people to learn from you? The fact that I'm standing here today is mind-boggling proof that I'm not little Christian anymore. I have found my home out in the larger world, just like you will. I still fall flat on my face a lot. It hurts a little more now because the nose is the only part of the human body that never stops growing. And the ears, the ears and the nose, they just keep... <laughs> something to look forward to. <laughs> The success that I've had, I attribute it to three things. You already heard the first one, don't be a jerk, that's A. B of all. Other people's success is not your failure. There are things in life that you can control and things that you can't. Envy is one of the things that you can control. We all have our own unique timeline. How much of your timeline do you want to spend comparing yourself to other people? Spoiler alert, the answer should be less. Just... C is simple. Be the most prepared person in the room. Anything less is laziness, period. I don't believe in luck anymore. I believe in preparation. Go forth and make the world a better place, please. Remember to say please. Remember, too, that this whole thing is supposed to be fun. Treat yourself. Be absurdly generous. Acknowledge everyone in the room, always. See what happens. Celebrate your friends. Some of them will be old friends. They will become old friends. Some of them won't, and that's okay, too. Work as hard as you possibly can, and then take a deep breath and work a little harder than that. Adlai Stevenson said, <laughs> your days are short here. This is the last of your springs. And now, in the serenity and quiet of this lovely place, touch the depths of truth. Feel the hem of heaven. You will go away with old good friends. And don't forget, when you leave, why you came.
Yoda said, do or do not. There is no try. So, you know, pick, just pick one of those. I don't care. It's loose here. Life and comedy share three simple rules. If you follow all three, you literally cannot fail. Number one, they got to be able to hear you. Number two, get off the stage early.